Oh god, ah, I'm gonna fall. I unplugged the mic. Shit. Wait. There we go. Now I can hear myself talk. Welcome. What is up, YouTube? I just finished. Um, actually, I didn't just finish. I watched the presser. As you can see, I'm in a hotel. This is not my normal room. Uh, I would never have art like that or walls like this. Don't even get me started. Look at the, this creaky ass chair. What the hell am I sitting in? Anyway, um, my thoughts on the Ubisoft preference. I thought they did a really good job. I got my uh, green notebook here full of E3 notes. I was really shocked that they opened up with Rayman Mario. I actually um, was a little, okay. My notes say here, remember when Rayman had, you know, Rayman, but hashtag Mario Rabbids, it looks really good. Miyamoto coming out was, that was spot on. Um, he seemed to like really be excited for it. I mean, the, the man is excited making toast for that matter, but, um, or so it seems anyway, the man can sell excitement. None other, nobody in the gaming industry has ever been able to top how Miyamoto sells anything anything at all don't forget he sold the original nintendo off of the teddy ruxpin look it up not making it up um also he spoke in english for a little bit that was really cool uh it showed that he was making an effort to kind of bridge the gap on a uh, english developer or an english speaking developer uh that was there one thing so without, before getting into the game, one thing uh, that was really interesting that I found is that they didn't, if I don't, I don't recall, but they didn't specifically state a console. Now, um, does that mean that we could be potentially getting Mario on the PC? I don't think you'll see Mario on the, uh, the Xbox or the PlayStation ever, for that matter. Uh, not ever, but uh, at least for this generation. Um... But they did dub this as like a non-Mario Mario game. And I thought that was kind of neat. And then they played the trailer. Um, the Peach, Princess Peach Rabbit. <laughs> it was hilarious. I loved it. Uh, and I'm much like I'm sure by the time this video uh, hits YouTube, everybody is making the comparisons to XCOM um, with turns like the cover system, tactical, gun-toting Mario for that matter. It, it was weird to see, but weird in a good way. I made a note here saying as well, if this is Switch only, I guess I need a Switch. What else we got here on Thompson? Uh, I posted this on my Twitter, but I, I did say like the Rabbit Peach giving Mario the fuck me eyes was everything I ever needed. It was a, a single shot. I'll see if I can set it for the thumbnail for the video um, and we'll see. It, the, the game looks great. Uh, I think it's a good mix of the IPs. They're, they're well suited to go together. They're both kind of like that family friendly. Um, let's... I'm just going to turn this. Look at that chair in the background. Jesus. Um, it's a good mix between Rayman and the Rabbids and Mario. It's, it's an interesting thing. I thought the environments were really well done. And it felt like it felt like a proper hybrid between the, uh, the IPs. And there were some tactics mechanics there that were uh, pretty interesting. I like that the, one of the mechanics was shown that Mario uh, attacked after the opponent moved. Um, I don't think I've seen that in a in a tactics game before. Just kind of neat. It, it allows for expansion, and plus the uh, the character jumping, the rabbit jumping on Mario to gain further. Uh, that was pretty neat. I, I hope that they they kind of have those kind of uh, things that that happen in the game because that's that's something that's really cool. I haven't played a Mario tactic game. Every time that they kind of Nintendo goes outside of their comfort zone with Mario, it seems to work out. There's not a lot of bad mario games out there um i can think of some like hotel mario but if they're involved in the development and which it looks like they are and they have um foresight into what they expect the game to be i think it'll be it'll be a system seller if i can make a recommendation for you nintendo make it switch exclusive don't put it on the wii u um and that will help sell the consoles i mean a lot of people already have them they have zelda with it um i'm not one of them I didn't really find any of the launch titles necessarily worth buying a Switch for. If this is Switch exclusive, I will probably buy one, just for this game. Uh, next they showed, I just put Ass Origin, uh, but I'm referring to Assassin's Creed Origin. Uh, not enough in it for me to buy it. It's 
not really what I'm looking for. I love Assassin's Creed 1 and 2. They were great. Not, not feeling uh, Origins at all. Um, then they showed the crew too. They took some, definitely took some, uh, let me just put this like right here so I can read my notes. They took some notes from Inception, obviously, and Christopher Nolan. Uh, there was some weird like panning when they were like, that went through and it was cool. Um, it looked like it was steep, but for driving and it looks like it's Ubisoft's answer to Burnout Paradise in a way. It's not in the, right, there's my camera line. Um, it did feel like that. They had kind of like the same, not like uh, Paradise City music, but they had like a very definitive sounding uh, music with it. And it's very pretty. I'll say that. It looks very, very pretty. Um, that being said, though, the boat racing that they showed and the plane racing it looked really dull. I, I I don't know how they're gonna do it, like to make it um, more exciting. Like Jet Moto does a great job at water racing, and there there's some plane games like uh, it's actually like kind of tough. Like if you think like Diddy Kong Racing as an example, uh, that was a pretty fun kart race plane game. There's not a lot of uh, realistic plane games out there or playing racing games anyway, and uh, I'll be interested to see how they do. But the, the car and the ground racing um, looks looks pretty good. Uh, some of the questions I have on the game they didn't answer, or if they did, they did after the presser. Uh, I'm not sure if it's an open world game um, or if it's like massively online, much similar to like Burnout Paradise that was, uh, how do the vehicles interact with each other? They showed in the trailer that the plane kind of came in over uh, the cars and kind of left like a, a cam trail behind it. Conspiracy theory. It's all cam trails in the air controlling your brain. Um, slash S. And it was like, it was, I'm wondering how they will interact specifically. Like, if they do interact and it's like uh, races going on in the ocean, in the sky, in the streets, all simultaneously. That's cool, but there's a lot of ass hats on the internet. So I'm hoping that somebody doesn't just get a plane and then crash it at the finish line or crash into much like a blue shell in Mario Kart, just crash into the first place player. Uh, there could be some colluding or some stream sniping that could exist if that's the case. They didn't really explain what that was or how they interacted together. I don't know. I don't, it's a guess, but anyway. Uh, South Park Fractured Butthole uh, was next. I didn't really see anything new on it. Uh, it's going to be a good game. Although, like the, graphically it looks, it looks great. Um, it's coming out October 17th. Uh, I do got to say though that the dialogue system looked a little chunky with the characters you create. And, and some games will do this. Uh, it, it's kind of a, a flaw of voice dialogue in general to where you're referred to as the new kid or a uh, hero or things like that that are very like um, open to interpretation. You're never really called by your character's name. Um, it, it's kind of a flaw of the of a voice acting. They're not going to sit there and computer program all the possibilities of names that they could do. So it, it, it just felt like a little clunky. There's ways that you can do it to not feel so inserted. Um, but I think it's going to be a good game. We'll see. They didn't show any of the gameplay on it. They only showed the character creation on it, which looks cool. Uh, they didn't. Like, they showed pretty much everything on the game at this point. So prepare for that October seventh or seventeenth. Uh, next was a, a transference, and it had Elijah Wood. It was a VR title um, speaking directly to the camera. I'm not sure what it is. Um, if it was announced before, I missed it, but. If it was like the the premiere of it, apologies, I just kind of missed it. Also, this chair is really low, and wasn't too many details. There was a, a few other actors' names in there, but they were definitely uh, selling the Elijah Wood um, connection on it quite a bit. That's coming out in spring 2018, and I'm not too sure what it's going to be. But they kind of talked about how um, you're uploading your like there was uploading your brain into something so i'm not sure what it's going to be if it's a horror game or if it's like a scientific game or something along those lines but uh we'll, we'll see what that what that does uh next they showed uh, skull and bones 
And I put a note here saying, remember when Assassin's Ass Creed 4 came out and people liked the boats more than the main game? Well, this is that game. This is Assassin's Creed, the Black Flag or Black Flag, uh, the boat version of that, the game. Uh, there was a weird, like, soggy nutmegs thing in there. I made a note of it. You can actually see. I didn't make it up. I put soggy nutmeg in there. What the hell is soggy nutmeg? Is that this is a weird reference? Also, they called it loot like a number of times with the the typical um, gamer announcer that was like, in a world where you must get all the loot you can, and was, make sure that you win the battle. It, 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 why didn't they call it booty? They had an opportunity to call it booty, but they didn't. I know why they didn't, but they should have. Um, let's see here. It kind of looked like Eve Online, but with for pirates. But it's probably going to be a skip for me on that one um, because it looked like it was mission based rather than kind of like open world. If there were like, if there were a game that was like EVE Online but for pirates, I'd probably be into it. Like if you built up your ship, sailed around, landed, and if it was big enough that there wasn't a lot of like uh, cross interaction, much like EVE Online, although. There's a lot in EVE Online. Um, it, it looked neat. Uh, truth be told, I watched this uh, slightly de delayed. I was about 15, 20 minutes back from um, from the actual timing of the event. Next, they had like an Ubi rave, which I'm guessing was Just Dance 11 teen at that point. Uh, I skipped it. I said like, this is, no, this is not for me. I am not a 13 year old girl. And I don't want to play Just Dance. It's not my thing. I have no problem with the games, but it's just not for me. Um, next, they showed Sternlink, Sterlink, which was a, a Switch shipbuilder. Like, they showed the controllers kind of, like, sliding in, and then there was, like, an attachment or something on top. Kind of like those um, Hot Wheels things you can put on your fingers and fly around with. But it, it kind of looked like a little bit of, like, a, a gacha kind of thing where... You have to buy the parts to get, like, the physical parts to put on the controller to play it in the game, uh, much like the Amiibos and, a, a, like, a, a few other games as well, Skylanders and so forth. Um, but it, it, I felt like I, I should have been, like, paying microtransactions just to watch that part of the presser. Like, I felt like they were going to, like, pause the live stream or the delayed stream for me and be like, please insert a dollar fifty-five to continue to watch this conference or play this ad six times to continue on to watch it. it it felt like um it felt like a microtransaction game and they showed the crowd after there weren't a lot of people really feeling that one uh, a little bit honestly like so far in the conference they were they were doing pretty good um much much better than bethesda's done but in this one it, it felt like this one was like a swing and a miss the, the rave was a swing and a miss uh skull and bones it's probably good uh next they showed steep again I kind of zoned out with it. Steep's not my game. I didn't even think that people still played it. I just didn't know. So if they announced something cool on there, cool. Not really for me. Um, uh, again, I get kind of zoned out. A guy like the a guy came by and he was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I was like, "Oh, hey, I'm watching the he, the Ubisoft conference." And he just kind of asked a couple of questions and I zoned out. Um, and then they showed Far Cry Five. Um, was that like a Nazi American flag? I, I'm Canadian. So I'm not 100%, but I don't think that's how the United States America flag looks normally. Um, they're, they're, I think they're going to catch some heat on it, but not in like a bad way, just due to like the, the certain, uh, not the certain, but the, uh, the current political condition that is kind of going on. It's, it's a little bit of a sensitive talk. I mean, it always is a sensitive topic, but it just feels more sensitive right now. Um, but it was all pre-recorded gameplay. And at one point, it was really weird, but it was an escort or a co-op mission with the CG or a computer-controlled character, and he, like, pointed the gun where he wanted to go, and he was like, go there. And I get that it's, like, crosshairs and it's first-person shooter, but often if I'm trying to direct someone to go somewhere, I don't take my gun and point it. it, it it's a really minor thing, I get it, but... Um, it looks like a standard Far Cry game from the gameplay and so forth. Uh, it, it doesn't look bad. And then, Hush came over the crowd. They stopped 
all the video they, they didn't stop all video but big announcement from ubisoft was drum roll beyond good and evil 2 holy crap um I gotta be honest, I was, every single E3 since the first one came out, I had been hoping for the sequel because I love that game. And I knew immediately when they showed um, the, the, the pig man with the, uh, the big Fu Manchu going on. And I went, it's an Ubisoft game with a uh, human pig character. If it is not beyond good and evil, they're gonna piss off everybody in this room. There's gonna be riots. Pitchforks from somewhere in an E3 conference. People are going to be throwing their lanyards and choking each other out with them if they don't have the little safety thing on the back. But it was Beyond Good and Evil 2. It looks like it's a prequel. It takes place way or well prior to uh, to Jade even being born. Um, the, the monkey character looks awesome. Uh, I really like the Bionic Commando uh, robot arm that existed kind of like reminded me of like a cross between uh bionic commando and hellboy in in terms of how that worked with uh with it being gold so we'll see how it works i hope they i hope they touch on like they play a pun or at least something with like the monkey's paw aspect of it because it's a big monkey and he's got a big paw why not do it and i wrote down it's about time i'm absolutely hyped you have no idea i tried to get onto the website as when they announced it uh, or 15 minutes after they announced it and the the whole thing the the site wasn't working it was hugged to death i couldn't get on it i wanted to register for whatever it was it could have been like register here to donate your body to ubisoft science and i'm like i right, fuck sign me up i need it if it gets me beyond good and evil too faster fuck take my kidney and I couldn't get on the site. I still can't at the time of this recording. Um, they end, at one point redirected everything to the regular uh, Ubisoft website. Still not up. That's fine. Truth be told, it felt less like a Beyond Good and Evil 2 game the further they kind of talked about it. And I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I, I'm really, really excited for it. I really hope they do it the justice it, it deserves. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, after that... They just kind of ended the conference. There was a little bit of back and forth between people playing. Like, I think the next thing they showed was like a gameplay thing of Assassin's Creed. And that's when I kind of zoned out and I went, all right, this is probably the rest of the conference that they're just going to show uh, the demos and stuff. I, I got to I gotta say, I like the uh, the Ubisoft conference much, much more than the, uh, the Bethesda and significantly more, uh, sorry, more than EA and significantly more than Bethesda in terms of content they were delivering the message that they were delivering there weren't a lot of people on the stage they were kind of doing the uh, the microsoft approach from this year where they were just like let's just show games get them through that's what people are here for um it ran a little not a little long but um not as long as i thought it was going to be so that was good <clears throat> excuse me and uh they did a good job if i had to give a rating uh i'd probably give them like a b plus on the uh, on the conference or maybe like a solid b little I, I liked it a little bit more than the microsoft one um slightly more so if i compare it to what i gave microsoft to what i'm giving uh ubisoft they were to me just slightly better not much better but uh it was it was pretty close to, to where they were doing um you, you got to give it up to miyamoto that you put miyamoto on a stage that's a non-nintendo event you're gonna get highly rated and then like you open with miyamoto nintendo other ips integration that's not Final Fantasy, because it seems to be the only one that they ever uh, integrate with, which which I love. But that was cool. And then they leave it with Beyond Good and Evil 2. That is how you start and end a conference. You fill up the rest with other shit and stop showing Assassin's Creed. Nobody needs to see it anymore at E3. It's going to be seen about 50 more times this year, but nobody needs it. If you love it, sorry, it's cool, but it's not for me. But... Um, yeah, anyway, B, I'm going to give it a B. Ubisoft, you get a B. Good job. Uh, next up is the Sony conference, and we will check it out, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Peace out.